Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today we'll be looking at the depreciation on the cash flow statement. As we do in each one of these fundamental analysis tutorial videos, I'll give you the actual definition, and then we'll go on to look at some examples and give you a little more insight. If you've already watched the uh, tutorial videos going over the income statement, you already know what this is. If you, if you haven't, then I recommend you watch this. Depreciation indicates how much of an asset's value has been used up. For tax purposes, businesses can deduct the cost of tangible assets. Remember, tangible assets refer to depreciation. Amortization is basically the same thing, only it applies to intangible assets. Anyway. Uh, businesses can deduct the cost of the tangible assets they purchase as business expense. However, businesses must depreciate these assets in accordance with IRS rules and how and when the deductions may be taken based on what the asset is and how long it will last. Depreciation is used in accrual basis accounting to try to match the expenses of an asset to the income that the asset helps the company earn or generate. The most common method of depreciation is a straight line method of depreciation, which is basically uh, uh, in the formula below here, you can see it's cost of assets minus the salvage value divided by the useful life or the number of years you expect that asset to benefit the company. For this example, we'll be looking at Walmart Stores Incorporated, the cash flow statement, the annual data, and we're just continuing this tutorial section, going over teaching you line by line what the cash flow statement is really showing investors how to read it. And today we're looking at depreciation. And this number right here is that depreciation for the 12-month period ending January the 30th, 2012. And the main thing to understand about depreciation is like the example said, that companies can or businesses can write off uh, for tax purposes the depreciation uh, of a previous asset that they have purchased. Uh, and that simply s is a subtraction from the net income on the income statement. Um, but when you look at the cash flow statement, you want to add that back. And so that's what they're doing here. And that's why it's a positive number. If it's a negative number, it had parentheses around it or it'd be red or it'd be the negative sign beside it or whatever. But in this case, they're adding it back to the net income because they understand that this is a non-cash charge. It means the company doesn't actually have to spend cash to write off the depreciation. When a uh, company goes out and buys an asset, they are in that case, whenever they do that, they are uh, making a capital expenditure right here. They'd be purchasing something to invest into their business. For, maybe it's a new car, maybe it's a, a plant, property, equipment, that type of thing. Um, when they do that, it goes here as a negative number. They're investing into the company. But when you're doing depreciation, all you're doing is saying, um, for tax purposes, this portion of that asset has been used up in this time period. Uh, and then previous time period we used it this portion and previous before that we used up a different portion uh, so you're just, you're showing it for uh, accounting purposes and tax purposes it has nothing to do with any actual cash that's going out of the company and therefore we add it right back into the net income because we're trying to figure out how much cash the company either generated for time period or uh, spent for time period and in this particular case depreciation does not cast, cost the company cash ergo we add it right back to it Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit loss or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.